everybody, my name is Melissa and welcome back to my channel, Hopeful Happenings. Today we're talking about Microsoft Word and all of the little secrets that you may not have known that would make your life a lot easier. You may want to take out your laptop or a notebook as you follow along. Alright, so let's get started with opening a new Word document. I'm going to teach you one of the easiest things and that is about bold, italics, and underline. Word does make this very easy to find on your home tab, but you'll still save a lot of time if you know the keyboard shortcuts. Now keep in mind the shortcut keys work both ways. Doing it once will change it to bold, italics, or underline and doing it a second time will change it back to the normal text. To create bold text, we do Control B. To do italics, it's Control I. Underline is Control U. And if I want to go back to the normal text, I just do the same thing again. Control B for bold, Control I, for italics and control U for underline. There are also shortcuts to change the paragraph alignment and the paragraph spacing. To align a paragraph to the left, do control L. To align it in the center, control E. To align it to the right, control R. Paragraph spacing is similar. Normally, if I wanted to change the indents and spacing of a paragraph, I would go to this little square on the right corner and click that. That will pop up this window and I have indents and spacing and line and page breaks. To single space a paragraph, push control one. To double space, control two. And to do a 1.5 spacing on your paragraph, control five. Yes, all of the buttons to change your paragraph alignment and spacing are at the ribbon in the top of the Word document, but these shortcuts are just going to save you time. One of my favorite hacks is the Find and Replace tool. You can find this by pushing Control G, and this will pop up. And what I mainly use for this is the Replace section. So I can find a certain word and replace it throughout the entire document with another word. I've had to use this a lot when I've changed a character's name, for example. This way I don't have to go through the entire manuscript changing the name. I can just put it in once and it automatically puts it in for me. You can also bring up the Find and Replace tool by pushing Control H. This tool can also be handy for extra spaces and double paragraphs. If you find that you have extra spaces between your periods, then you can put in the replace, find what? A period, followed by two spaces, and then in the replace section, you can put a period followed by one space. That way, all of the double spaces will be replaced by only one space. Make sure you click replace all for this to be applied to the entire document. And to get rid of double paragraphs, put in this symbol, which is the symbol for a paragraph break, and replace it with only one. Once again, click Replace All to do the entire manuscript. Let's say you want to create a bulleted list. To create a bullet list, you can do an asterisk and then the space bar. Your first bullet will appear automatically. You can just start your list and when you don't want to have a bulleted list any longer, press the Enter key twice and it will return to the standard formatting. If you'd rather have dashes instead of bullets, then you can do the same trick. Push the dash and then the space bar and it will automatically appear. Another keyboard shortcut is Control shift l This will bring up a bulleted list right away. Have you ever put something all in caps and then wanted to change it so you just rewrote the whole sentence? Well, there's a hack for that too. If you want to change uppercase to lowercase, you can just put shift F3. Push it again and you'll get the same sentence with lowercase and uppercase. Push it again and it will go back to all caps. When copying and pasting text from another place into your document, 
Sometimes the formatting can be way off. To fix this, just highlight the text and push Control Spacebar. This will automatically bring it to the default setting on your Word. Now up here on the ribbon, I have Heading 1. There's also Heading 2, Heading 3. These headings are what I use for chapters in my novel. What I would do is I'd get my title and I'd highlight it and then click Heading 1. Automatically it sets the font and the size, but it also creates a little bookmark so that I can go and find it easier later. Now let's say I've got five chapters and I'm at chapter one, but I want to go to chapter five. An easy way to get there, if I've already put chapter five under a heading, is Control F. This will bring up my navigation bar on the left side. The navigation bar is great. I use this all the time. Right now I'm going to headings and I want to look at my different chapters or my different headings, whatever I've chosen. All I have to do is click on it and it brings me right there. But I can also use this navigation bar for other things. I can locate pages faster. I can also research a certain word or sentence and it will pull up the results. Honestly, the navigation bar is an editor's best friend. I use this all the time when I'm going through my documents because it's just easier and faster. But let's go back to the headings. Headings are amazing because they have font and size all ready to go when you click it. But there is a way to change these settings. In order to change what your headers look like, go to the top and do a right click, then choose modify from the menu. A screen will pop up and you can change just about anything you want about the font, color, spacing, number formatting, and more. Not only this, but if you want these changes to be permanent and go across multiple documents, then you just need to click this little dot here at the bottom, New Documents Based on this Template, and every single time you open Word, it will now be the default for this heading. The last thing we're talking about today is track changes. Track changes keeps a record of the changes you've made when editing. This is especially useful for beta readers because they can use track changes to show you what things need to be fixed. They can even go in the sentences and change them themselves and it will show you the edits they've made and it will show you the original document as well. To get there we'll go to review and track changes is right here click track changes for it to be activated. How much you see of the track changes depends on which one you want to click. Simple markup, all markup, no markup, or original. When I'm making the corrections, I often do simple markup, but if I'm looking at the corrections from someone else, I'll often do all markup. If you're reading someone else's document and you wanna make comments, you would just need to highlight and then click new comment. To navigate these comments, if you're the one reading it, click Reviewing Pane right here, and it will pop up on the left side all of the comments in the entire document. Not only does the Reviewing Pane help you see what the comments are, but you can also delete the comments here as well. You may not have known, but you can check your document's readability. It's based off of two readability scores according to the Flush Kincaid Grade Level Test and the Flush Reading Ease Test. The Flush Reading Ease Test shows you that essentially the higher the score, the easier it is to understand your document. You at least want a score that's about 60, but if you're writing for kids, then the score should be a lot higher. The Flesh Kincaid grade level test is based off of U.S. school grade levels. For example, if you had a score of 8, then that means that an 8th grader can understand the document. Most regular documents should have approximately a grade 7 or grade 8 level score, but if you're writing for children that are younger than this, then this test will help you get to the right age. How you can find your document's readability is you can go to File, Options all the way down here, select Proofing, then select Show Readability Statistics. Now if you press 
F7 at the top of your keyboard, it will show you the spelling. You'll have to make sure that all of your spelling mistakes and grammar mistakes are completed before it will show you the document's readability. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, then please give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed, then go ahead and click that subscribe button so you can get more writing tips. I post once a week on YouTube and I post daily on Instagram, also sharing writing tips on there and connecting you with the writing community. So until next week's video, happy writing.